In the previous lecture we started talking about the cardiac arrhythmias treatments. We said that they are divided to four major classes according to their mechanism of action. And we already discussed class 1. So today we'll discuss the other three classes. Class 2 agents are beta-adrenergic antagonists. These drugs decrease heart rate and contractility. And they diminish phase 4 depolarization and depress automaticity, and prolong AV conduction. These agents are useful in treating tachyarrhythmias, caused by increased sympathetic activity, and are useful for atrial flutter and fibrillation, and for AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. They also prevent life-threatening, ventricular arrhythmias following a myocardial infarction. There are three drugs we should mention here, metoprolol, propranolol, and ismolol. Metoprolol is the most widely used beta blocker in the treatment of cardiac arrhythmias. Compared to non-selective beta blockers such as propranolol, it reduces the risk of bronchospasm. We already know that the non-selective beta blockers block beta-1 receptors in the heart, so they decrease the heart rate, as well as blocking beta-2 receptors in the lungs, causing bronchospasm. For further information feel free to watch Beta Blockers lecture, the link will be down in the description. The third one, is Molal. It is a very short-acting beta blocker, used for intravenous administration, in acute arrhythmias that occur during surgery, or emergency situations, as it has a fast onset of action and a short half-life. Class 3 agents mainly block potassium channels, so they diminish the outward potassium current during repolarization of cardiac cells. They prolong the duration of the action potential, and they prolong the effective refractory period. Note that all class 3 drugs have the potential to induce arrhythmias. There are five drugs we'll briefly talk about. Amiodrone, Dronidrone, Sotalol, Dohetilide, and Ibutilide. Amiodrone contains iodine, and is related structurally to thyroxine. It has complex effects, showing class 1, 2, 3 and 4 actions, as well as alpha blocking activity. Its dominant effect is prolongation of the action potential duration, and the refractory period, by blocking potassium channels. It is effective in the treatment of severe refractory supraventricular, and ventricular tachyarrhythmias. And it is the main therapy for rhythm management, of atrial fibrillation or flutter. It has a prolonged half-life of several weeks, and it is distributed extensively in adipose tissue. Amiodrone shows a variety of toxic effects, including pulmonary fibrosis, neuropathy, hepatotoxicity, corneal deposits, optic neuritis, blue-gray skin discoloration, and hypo- or hyperthyroidism. So it needs close monitoring to reduce toxicity. Dronidrone is closely related to amiodrone, so we can make a comparison to make it simple. Dronidrone is a benzofuran, amiodrone derivative, which is less lipophilic, so it has a lower tissue accumulation, and shorter serum half-life. It doesn't have the iodine moieties, that are responsible for thyroid dysfunction, associated with amiodrone. Like amiodrone, it has class 1, 2, 3 and 4 actions. It is used to maintain sinus rhythm in atrial fibrillation or flutter, but it is less effective than amiodrone. It is contraindicated in those with symptomatic heart failure, or permanent atrial fibrillation, due to an increased risk of death. Dronidrone has a better adverse effect profile than amiodrone, but may still cause liver failure. And the third one is Sotalol. It has two isomers and two actions. The levo isomer has beta blocking activity. And dextro isomer has class 3 action, so it blocks the rapid outward potassium current and prolongs the duration of the action potential. It is used for maintenance of normal sinus rhythm in patients with atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, or refractory paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, and in the treatment of ventricular arrhythmias. This drug can cause the typical adverse effects associated with beta blockers, but has a low rate, 
of adverse effects when compared to other antiarrhythmic drugs. The dose should be monitored in patients with renal disease, since the drug is renally eliminated. Dofetilide is a pure potassium channel blocker. It can be used as a first-line antiarrhythmic drug in patients with persistent atrial fibrillation and heart failure, or in those with coronary artery disease. But because of the risk of proarrhythmia, dofetilide initiation is limited to the inpatient setting. Ibutilide has a mixed class 3 and 1 AE action. As dofetilide, ibutilide also has a risk of proarrhythmia, so its initiation is also limited to the inpatient setting. Class 4 drugs are the non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, verapamil and deltizem. Verapamil shows greater action on the heart than on vascular smooth muscles, and deltiasm is intermediate in its actions. Both of them bind only to open depolarized voltage-sensitive channels, thus decreasing the inward current carried by calcium. So they prevent repolarization until the drug dissociates from the channel. They also slow conduction in tissues that are dependent on calcium currents, such as the SA and AV nodes. These agents are more effective against atrial than against ventricular arrhythmias, so they are useful in treating reentrant supraventricular tachycardia and in reducing the ventricular rate in atrial flutter and fibrillation. After talking about the four classes, here are two pieces of information you should know. In contrast to the sodium channel blockers, beta blockers and class 3 agents such as sotalol and amiodrone are increasing in use. Amiodrone is the most commonly used antiarrhythmic and thought to be the least proarrhythmic of the class 1 and 3 antiarrhythmic drugs. That's all for this lecture. In the next lecture we'll start talking about angina. So subscribe and wait for the next lecture.